Good morning, book lovers of the internet. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe because for every subscriber, I get a new subscriber and you also read a page from a book of my choice. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing the Wild Robot movie based on the book by Peter Brown, I believe, which I finished reading a couple of years ago. This is a movie made by DreamWorks, which I enjoyed thoroughly. It is about an hour and 40 minutes long and I rated it 4 out of 5 stars. Um, it came out earlier this year, just a couple of weeks ago, I think, if not days. And yeah, I enjoyed the book as well, I remember, and now I have the sequels, which I look forward to reading too. So I just want to finish the trilogy. And the fourth book, um, not sure if it's a new trilogy or a continuation, but it has already been announced. And if you know me, I mean... I was speaking about having just finished this movie in the live stream, but if you know me, I am generally not much of an emotional person, but this movie made me cry eight entire teardrops, and that hasn't happened in a very long time. And much like the producers of this movie, I couldn't hold back. I mean, they were absolutely cooking with the production of this movie. Um, they put all their effort into making one of the best movies I've ever watched. And it's meant to be a movie for children, but I've never watched something as evocative. <laughs> and nothing's made me so emotional in such a long time. The Wild Robot ironically made me feel human again. So yeah, I mean, we should go back to making movies with positive messages especially if they're meant for children. Can we please just do that? Is it too much to ask to make movies like this? I mean, I'm completely sick. I'm devastated with all the brain rot, YouTube and TikTok um, bullshit, basically. I'm tired of all the brain rot, all the skibbity toilet, all the, all the stuff which doesn't teach kids anything. It's gross to see. And this movie had such powerful messages. I mean, it depicted how racism and bullying others can be extremely futile if you don't know the person, or in this case, the robot. I mean, prejudice is never a beautiful thing to see, but this movie made prejudice look so ridiculous, and it depicted messages which I didn't think a movie made for children would possibly be able to. So, I mean, it also had the lovely notion of family not necessarily meaning bonded by blood, and I feel as though many kids nowadays don't understand how privileged they are when having someone who loves them. I feel as though that sort of trait or value or whatever is dying out and kids are spending too much time looking at a screen, not learning anything, ignoring the ones who love them, destroying relationships with the ones who care for them. So yeah, I mean, just to summarize a bit, this movie is basically about a robot who gets shipwrecked on an island and learns to live with the animals after killing a gosling's family and then adopting said gosling to make up for the accident. So I do have some arguably controversial opinions about this movie. However, Pedro Pascal is Fink. I'm pretty sure he's the, the fox, a clever, very clever fox. He was brilliant, by the way, but Pascal is rather perfect, so I wasn't surprised. And what really brought tears to my eyes was when Rose's memories were going to be stolen away uh, so that the robot could be returned to the factory and used for other purposes. And hence her identity was about to be annihilated even though she tried to override the system to create memories with the Gosling. And she made the entire island her family, basically. And she even allowed herself to be a robot nabbed, I suppose, just to, just to keep the animals safe from humanity. So I'm glad that the animals finally saw reason and decided to help her as she'd helped them in order for her to have one last conversation with her child, I suppose, the gosling. So one question I have, which would of course have been too, too, too morbid to include the answer to in the movie, is that of what the animals are going to eat now that they've made a truce not to kill each other. I mean, Rose kind of made them promise to take care of each other, but truly that isn't realistic at all when it comes to to nature. I know that um, it's a kid's movie after all, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense logically. I know that there isn't really meant to be a lot of logic in such a kid's movie, but there's, it gives off such a realistic atmosphere. 
um, that it's hard to believe that these animals will not return to killing each other, and I doubt they will be eating male bovine excrement, so I, I highly doubt that they will go vegan. <laughs> Um, speaking of male bovine excrement, that is probably my favorite quote from the entire movie. It took me a while to piece together that he was mentioning bullshit, um, but yeah, it's a very clever way of going about it without actually using the slur. Or the rather than a slur, it's more of a rude word, right? Uh, since it's a kid's movie, there are some things you can't say, so they managed to um, go about it in a very, very clever manner, in my opinion. So, I mean, I feel as though this is where the controversial opinion comes in. I feel as though Rose caused more damage than she did um, repair, when you really think about it. Um, but at the end of the day, it all has to do with humanity creating these robots, and where humanity is concerned, unfortunately, nature doesn't really appreciate that, and nature usually suffers. So I'm pretty sure that unless humans intervene again, nature will be able to repair itself, and now that Rose is gone, um, nature, the damage that was caused because of Rose, will probably um, be able to get fixed. So she was good company. She did save all the animals during a horrible um, hailstorm, I think, or snowstorm or whatever. I don't really know what they're called since we don't get them in Malta. But she saved all of the animals and she took care of every single one of them, even the fish, which... Uh, seemed to me to be a bit of an of an extreme, uh, since that is what they would do anyway. But, I mean, she did change Brightbill's life, which would otherwise have had no chance of survival, right? Brightbill's life would have ended very, very quickly, since he's the runt of the litter, since um, he wasn't meant to survive to begin with, but Rose um, took care of him to an extent where um, she gave him his life back, he was able to migrate with the other geese, and he was able to live a normal life. He got to experience the migration after a montage of preparation, which was very cool. And I, I honestly do look forward to more movies. I do hope that they adapt the following books um, as well into movies. And I commend DreamWorks for doing such a great job. So that's all I had to say about The Wild Robot. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, check out the rest of the content, because why not? It's absolutely amazing. And I will see you in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. Bye, guys.